Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this, and welcome to part two of buying a bike from a private individual rather than a dealer. Having sussed out the seller and gone for a test ride and given the bike a careful going over, it's now time to get to the boring bits of the paperwork and a few other things which is always nice to have with a bike when you buy one. First up is the logbook, also known as a V5C. These used to be called V5s till a load of them went mysteriously missing from the printers and the whole lot were reissued in this format. You'll see it's got V5C at the top left hand corner and a bit about the document is not proof of ownership. This is very important because if somebody's taken out what's called a logbook loan on this vehicle you could end up losing it because the debt stays with the vehicle not with the rotten so-and-so that sold you a, a bike with a load of debt still on it. So you'll lose what you paid the person you bought it from and lose the bike or you could have to pay off the loan from the bike to keep it. You can do finance checks, which now do include any logbook loans, outstanding. But bear in mind, if someone's taken out a logbook loan a day or two before you take ownership, it might not show on these checks. The old V5s looked something like this. If you presented with one of these instead of a genuine one, walk away. There's something wrong that if they haven't got the genuine and updated V5. These were issued approximately 10 years ago, the new ones, to replace this style. So if they haven't got it for any reason, and no don't even think about buying the bike what you should see are the seller's name and address and the used to be the previous keeper's name but this no longer appears once they're updated make sure the name and address of the seller matches where you've actually seen the bike you can't ask the seller to prove their identity or anything like that they might be willing to but they might tell you to get lost in the red boxes you'll see that there's the date when the vehicle was acquired by the current registered keeper and the number of former owners. This is a 2003 bike bought in 2005 by the current owner and there's been two former keepers. Two keepers in two years is a little bit short. Uh, they've bought the bike, passed it on fairly quickly, but sometimes dealers pre-register vehicles to keep their bonuses up. So the first registered keeper might well have been a dealer, not an, a private owner. The next thing you want to be looking at seeing is the MOT ticket. You can buy bikes without an MOT perfectly legally, but it's much better to have an MOT with the vehicle so you can actually ride it home. Once you've insured it, of course. Looking at the mileage history of this bike, you can see that between 2015 and 2017 it did a grand total of 17 miles that's painfully small for most bikes i do know the history of this and why it was so low and you can see that between the march and september 2017 it actually got just over 300 miles put on it at the other extreme the mileage on this one is quite a lot higher well over 100,000 miles and averaging sort of six to 10,000 miles a year so obviously well used and hopefully well looked after. You'll see that this MOT certificate has got a pass on it and also hidden behind these yellow figures to disguise the identity of the vehicle because it's one of mine. These details should all match the bike you're presented with. You can also do an MOT history check online. You type in the reg number of the vehicle, a few other details and it will actually bring up any failures, passes or advisories that have uh, shown up in the last few MOTs. If every other year there's something like leaking fork seals or something regularly failing, then you might wonder if there's an underlying problem causing this and bear it in mind when you're making an offer on the bike if you decide to buy it. Not all bikes these days come with a service book. Yamaha certainly don't anymore, it's all online. But as well as the books, see if they've actually got the receipts for the services because this proves it's been done. I can write in a book, a mileage, a date and put a service down and sign it you can't prove it's been done or not whereas a bill has a bit more credence once a bike's out of warranty period if the person servicing it themselves they might have kept receipts for things like oil and filters i don't so don't expect to see those 
when it comes to keys it's always nice to have two original ones yes you can lose a key get one recut especially on an older bike but at a year old i would expect the keys to be matching and branded you'll see the two sets of keys here the one on the right's been used the most the one on the left still got what i'll call the key dom on it the plastic sheath that goes over keys when they're new and both sets of keys match yeah the key ring's slightly different but there's ignition key luggage key alarm transmitter garage door key and disc lock key so they're a matching pair of key sets don't be perturbed on an older bike if you see something like this this is actually a key fob with an alarm in it the original key sits inside the bigger fob which also has the transmitter to arm and disarm the alarm that's fitted to the bike an important thing on more modern bikes is to get the red key if there's a transponder on the bike this is the master key which not only has the correct cutting on it so another key can be cut from it it also has the master transponder code built into this and that will be needed to program up a key if you lose one of the other two so in the case of Yamaha's um, not all of them some of the smaller ones only have two keys you'll get two black keys and this red key which you keep very very safely otherwise you're looking at about a two grand bill to get another transponder unit and a couple of keys cut for it. Moving on to the things it's nice to have, some owners do keep everything to go with the bike. I don't anymore but what I have kept in the case of my Hornet are all the original sales documentation the owner's manual service manual and also the alarm instructions other things it's nice to have are fitting instructions for anything that's attached to the bike in the case of this it's the luggage for my Hornet I fitted it myself and kept the instructions and if you ever do need to take the back of the bike apart for any reason you can see how it all comes apart and more importantly how it all goes back together and sometimes these also have torque settings on them that you'd need to know to firmly attach all the luggage frames back to the bike and another nice thing to have are anything like sales brochures and accessory lists not very valuable at the moment but they do go with the bike and if you see the price of some old catalogues and things from the 60s and 70s these are well worth keeping hold of other things worth looking at and asking the owner what are they doing are they giving up biking or are they going to get another bike if they're looking at giving up biking think about making an offer for things like locks top boxes which could be interchangeable to go on to a new bike um, any specialist tools or anything and just get them as a job lot before they go on ebay because chances are the owner would rather sell them as a job lot for a known price rather than go on ebay and of all the messing about of trying to split things up and sell off i only want one of these or i'd like this little bit rather than buying a job lot servicing manuals as well paints manuals or genuine workshop manuals are always good to have and if they come with the bike it saves you trying to track one down especially on the older bikes you won't find a Haynes manual for them anymore because they're out of print you might find a second hand one or a pdf online if you're lucky but if you can get everything to go with the bike so hopefully that's given you an idea of a few more things to look at when you're going to buy a bike obviously a lot of these things you're going to know about anyway um, hopefully it's given you a few extra things to think about and check when you do go and buy a new pride and joy if you do, then I hope you enjoy riding it and you don't have any problems because you've done all the checks you need to before you buy it. Happy riding and see you on the road at some point.